a very good evening to you who is watching us this evening. To God be the glory that you are alive up to date. We are grateful that you've chose Church of Uganda Family TV this evening. And you are watching Flourishing Hub. Flourishing Hub is a program brought to you by Young and Flourishing Foundation. And this program is intended to give you, as a young person, the right mindset so that you can thrive through this world. And as I've always reminded you that Young and Flourishing Foundation is built on four pillars, which pillars are the basis of this program. So every Monday at 9 a.m. we are addressing one or if not all of those pillars. The first pillar is money. So Young and Flourishing opens your mind to working for the money, saving, but most importantly, investing the money. The second pillar is strategy having a plan as a young person you should have a plan because if you do not have a plan then you'll always be in other people's plans the third pillar is daring mm. we, we, we never uh, undermine or underlook humble beginnings because those ideas will at one time be world-class businesses and the last pillar is mentorship you need a mentor you need someone who speaks into your life you need someone who you look up to so young and flourishing has this full package for you all wrapped in flourishing hub that you are watching right now now today we are looking at the role of young people in africa's growth and development and we talk about young people you are the young person we are talking about you who is watching us today and we are blessed this evening to have one of uh, those most important people to address this because they have been to Uganda and out of Uganda. They have served in Uganda and out of Uganda. So they have really seen it all and so they can tell us your role as a young person. Now with us is Mr. Silva Mwesugwa who is the head of procurement at Comesa Secretariat which is in Lusaka, Zambia. Mr. Silva, you're most welcome to Flourishing Hub this evening. Thank you, and I'm greatly honored to be here. And it's my first time, so thank you for having me here. Please feel at home. This is a family. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're most welcome to thank Flourishing Hub. Thank you. Kind of greet those uh, people watching us. Thank you. Um, our viewers and uh, everyone who is watching us from wherever they are in, in the country, outside the country, in the comfort of their homes, greetings and uh, I'm happy to be with you and I'm glad and I'm looking forward to sharing with you the, the, the minutes or hours we have here and I hope that our message will impact us, will impact you positively and one by the end of this program you can pick one or two things and say thank god that i was on this program today evening that's what we are looking up for now uh, just to start with uh, your own understanding of a youth to you who is a youth because uh we have a, a problem in mm. in africa of fixation mm. that as uh, people think that uh, being a youth is by doing certain things. Mm. So to you who should call themselves a youth? Okay, so there are very many, uh, you know, basis of foundations mm. of defining who is a youth. Mm. If you go to a constitution, mm. a constitution will define it as somebody who is between the age of 18 mm. to 35. Yeah. Uh, but general practice, maybe by African Union standards, they will even stretch it to 15 years or mm. 14 years. But the cut-off point that is usually acceptable by all standards is 35 years. <laughs> uh, some lower it 30 years in some countries. They say 18 to 30, 16 to 35. Mm. So, but in general terms, without going into the legal uh, frameworks, mm. we say anybody who is above maybe 15 years mm. up to the age of 35, okay. we can categorize them as young people, as youth. Mm. Does it mean that... Uh, Okay, is it that uh, because within this period, mm -hmm. within this age bracket, that is when we expect someone to be more productive, more energetic, in that as they grow 36, 37, their graph starts to fall. Is it the reason as to why they cut it at 35? Yes, actually if you look at the word youthful is, or youth 
is also rated to useful. <laughs> the one with USB, USB. Uh, you know, FUL. Mm. So it's, it's the, the two are synonymous because that's the most biologically, that's when the human being is fully active, uh, developing, at, uh, you know, both physically and mentally. Mm. So it is the age group where um, most of the productivity innovations on average standards take place. Mm. So it's it's the age when you you are no longer a child, and you are not yet regarded as a senior citizen or <laughs> in, uh, in the other category. Okay. So it's the, that age between 15 mm. is where we see a, a, the formation of character. Mm. You are no longer forgiven for certain mistakes. Because when a child does some things, they'll be sympathetic mm. and say he's a child or she's a child. Mm. We can let it go. So if you're 25, there are certain things society will judge you for not doing them the right way. Mm. Even God will judge you because you, you're expected to be a human being, take responsibility for your mm. actions. It's the age where we see maturity. It's the age where we see uh, responsible decisions. It's even the age where we see people starting to, 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 to have families, yeah. uh, even by all standards, uh, 20, 25. Yeah. So you, you are now responsible not only for yourself, mm. but f uh, you have capacity to even be responsible for other human beings. Mm. So for any society, uh, globally, that's the most productive age group. That's the most product. Actually, most of the investment, most of the resources mm. are focused towards those that age group. And if you recall, <laughs> there are certain jobs when you are, they will tell you that only people below 30 years yeah. <laughs> are allowed to apply. Yeah. Then they say only people uh, below 35 years are allowed to apply for these jobs. Yeah. Uh, even some professions like the military, they will tell yeah. you uh, after maybe th people, it is open to 18 to 25 that, yeah. years or 18 to 30 years because that's mm. when they know you are able to be productive. That's mm. when they know you are able to. So it's a critical age group okay. that uh, that we really is it means a lot for any human being. Mm. So when we talk about this critical age group, we realize that this is the age bracket or the age group that has embraced uh, the digital era mm. most. So you realize that the young people understand the digital world yes. more than anyone else. Yes. And uh, how can the young people use the digital era uh, or the, digital, the digitization mm -hmm. uh, of the system to empower themselves and cause this um, growth that we are looking at today? Thank you for that question. Um, I think in Africa, we, we unfortunately, we do not invent so much mm -hmm. in terms of technology or things we use. Let it be phones, let it be cars, let it be, you know, this. So I think the digital era somehow caught us, caught us off guard in some mm. aspects. If you, most research studies have indicated almost 70 to 80% of young people are struggling with uh, internet social media addiction. Yeah. So you, you and, and, and somehow even as parents, we've, I had the conversation with somebody a few months ago where somebody says their son who is eight years as a phone mm. and I was asking do you even do you monitor what they do on that phone do you watch what they do on that phone the person said no they, I just just for me to keep them busy the weekends so you see how bad it is so the the, 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 the dilemma we have as a continent is that we have the people who design these tools mm. design them as business concepts they need consumers they need people who are going to spend 12, 13 hours of the day on the phone yeah. because every minute you are on, on any active platform, mm. let it be WhatsApp, let it be Facebook, TikTok. those the initiators, the owners are earning. Mm. And, and unfortunately, as a society, we will not put sort of like benchmarks at the family level. Mm. Uh, our parents, because of the work environment, you wake up to go to work, you don't even know what's happening at home, you, you've left the computer open, 
you've left the laptop open and some of them uh, some of us as parents we are using the the phones as you know sort of like to keep our children busy and at that time the content because if you know the, in our era when we wanted when i was in the university about 20 something years uh, you know about 15 years ago um when i needed information i went to the library mm. I would go to the to the library. Uh, I was at Makere University for my BCom. I read the books, and at that time the computers were not that popular. Even phones were for the rich. <laughs> so if you went to the computer lab, mm. it would be only to research and with limited time. So right now we have a, 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 an opportunity of what you call social media accessibility and internet accessibility that is almost everywhere, mm. which would be a very key tool mm. to an advancing society, yeah. but has become a negative tool that is occupying the age group we talked about, yeah. the 18, I mean 15, now mm. we have extended it even to 10, mm. to 12 that are already addicted to these yeah. gadgets. But we cannot blacklist and say these platforms are all bad. I know there is a smaller percent, just as I said, 7 to 20 percent mm. addicts. So mm. there is a 20 percent that are using these social networks mm. and social platforms for productive work. Yeah. I know very many young people that are doing online businesses. Yeah. They'll tell you if you want watches, if you have, they have a page, they have, mm. you know, where they post their, the, 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 the businesses they do, they post their ads mm. and, and, and are able to interlink with, the, with, the, with their clients. There are many other young people that are using these open platforms to create solutions. Mm. We've seen uh, transport. When I was coming here, I'd, I ordered my taxi online. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, 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 the taxi driver picked me from my house and brought me here. Mm. So those are the benefits that have come through that kind of accessibility to information. Mm -hmm. But as a continent, we, as I said, we have... 80-70% uh, of young people using it not in a productive way mm. but 90 I mean to a great extent to they, they, they have they have become addicts to these social networks and for as I said it works for those people who made it because then we help them to get the money I mm. can tell you practical example I was in uh, uh, 2019 I was in South Korea mm. South Korea you they have open internet everywhere you go. Every in the in the compound, in the bus park, in the any place you go is open internet. You don't need passwords, you don't need anything. But the orientation of their young people, uh, I rarely, for example, on the streets found a group of young people on the streets, you know, with their phones uh, working while well, working. No. They they know actually I asked a few colleagues, they said majority of them are not even on these social platforms like Facebook or whatever. They are using internet for innovations. Robotics, I have a, a young man from the district where I come from, mm. from Isinjur uh, in Yamuyanja. I met him in, in South Korea. He got a scholarship in robotics. And is, 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 it will come back to the point I wanted to make later mm. about uh, what we call intellectual fright. Mm. Uh, where our young, bright people are, are taken out of our continent to these countries that know how to use these technologies mm -hmm. and are developing uh, consumer products and to us for us as consumers. So I'll give you an example of South Korea and Uganda or mm. even Zambia where I work. Yeah. If, you, if children are on holiday, they, they 70 20 percent they're on WhatsApp chatting and picking a lot of useless information. And, and, and the other side, the generation, their age, say in China or India or wherever, they are using the same internet platform to develop solutions, to develop new softwares, to develop programs, to develop... And, and they know that I am only around maybe one hour after class to check on my... And his own WhatsApp probably to say, where are you? Mm. Where can we meet? Where do we go for lunch? It's not about... You know, like in Sharing Uganda, if you are, if you are, in, when I go to Uganda, we have become a society which I call a rumor mongering society. <laughs> we are interested in who is with who, who has stolen what, who has done what. So uh, all our social media mm. 
is and and I'll take it back to I've talked about the part of parents yes. on, on on how yes. innocently we expose the young people and even at 18 years when they started at seven they are mm. addicts now in the media where we are right now in this media platform the when you ask some media practitioners they tell you if you post about young people making history in, the, in Uganda, mm. peop, young people who are employing a thousand people, young people who have broken into the ranks of careers, young mm. lawyers or young doctors, they, they say that news doesn't sell. Exactly. They tell you that that doesn't make news. Tell them that somebody has been caught on, the, on Kampara Road stealing and has been beaten, then that's what it becomes the headline. Yeah. So we, we, we have a responsibility while the individual young people, because remember those age groups, the one who's talked about, they come from societies. Mm. They come from the families, they come from groups, and what we feed them is what determines partially what they are going to become. So for me, on the part of social media, I must say, at a personal level, somebody who has traveled quite a lot, mm. I have moved to, I don't know how many countries in this world, mm. but I get disappointed, every African, and, and uh, I was in Ethiopia two weeks ago, I think the just beginning of April. Mm. Ethiopia is doing well. It's one of the most emerging African countries that's going to shock the world. Mm. Because they regret. For example, some platforms like Facebook mm. and, uh, and, and, uh, and certain areas are not accessible. Here the government started and young people ended up um, coming up, uh, you know, exploring into VPN and they ended up accessing. Yes, so some people may think this is dictatorial. Mm. Some people may say this is unethical. But development must come with some levels of, of cost. Mm. There is no country that has developed its young generations without restrictive procedures. If we use, feel that maybe the parents have failed to do their job in terms of controlling access to social media on, up on components that are harmful, mm. I mean, switch it off for certain hours in the extreme areas. Uh, you can call, you can reach out somebody through other means and say between this time and this time, Facebook is off, as an example, if it's the addiction that is causing the, the problems. But I think what we need to do as, as, a, as, as, as a community, as a government, as a church, is to see how do we re-energize our young people to tap into the potential, mm. the beautiful potential that is in internet availability. Mm. I, I, I know, I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in Uganda now, I, I, I am able to reach out to my colleagues at office, I'm able to work and send documents, mm. that's what internet is for. Mm. So for me, if we are to make useful of the internet accessibility mm. in, in Africa and in Uganda, uh, the question of how do we sort of like bring to an end the addiction behavior among mm -hmm. young people on as consumers of every garbage that is thrown on. Because the internet is full of everything. You go in, you find everything. And, and that must be a deliberate effort. Because we are talking about other vices like, you know, alcoholism, we're talking about mm. Uh, you know, homosexuality and other things, but the corruption, this is which corruption is and other headlines yes, now. heading headlines. But this is also another disaster because this is destroying the minds, mm. and creativity is coming to zero. So, I, I, as if we are to make headways on internet usage, we must be able to control at a level where children are maybe ten. Uh, seven and, and as parents, I mean, at what stage mm. should you allow your child, as you said, below 15, to access certain gadgets? Mm. If you uh, we are because we know that these gadgets are very instrumental in their learning, I want my child who's seven years to be able to, 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 to use the computer mm. and, and, and be able to develop certain things on the computer because, like, when we had COVID. Uh, most schools went digital. Yeah. So the question is, what content? Mm. And some people, even the TVs, you know that even DSTV has options for which channels you can allow exactly. on, your, on, your, on your TV. Mm. They know that they ca there is even child rock, mm. that you can block certain channels for your child to not to see them. So when they are home and they're not there, then you ca they can only watch what you have allowed them to watch. Mm. My children watch TV, 
if they are going to watch a movie on Netflix, our agreement is that I must vet the movie. Even when I'm not home, they'll send me, uh, I'll go search and say, this is the movie. Because there's age restriction mm. on each of the movies. So if I allow them to access whatever they want to, then I might be aware as well I'm here on TV and they are busy doing things I have no control over. Yeah. So there must be that ability as, as from uh, all players to mm. control the content. Mm. If it's a t if it's a it's it's a it's a, a computer at home for work for school, mm. block. There are certain mm. channels you can block. The IT people know mm. that you can block certain uh, websites. Yeah. They cannot access YouTube. Mm. They cannot access Facebook. They can only access certain channels that will, and you can even block videos. You can block mm. images. Anything that comes as a video, you block it. So for me, as we focus on building young people. The biggest threat we have as a continent is how to manage social media, how to manage what comes through the internet because we've, um, we've become a consumer. The people who are producing these things don't use them. If you yeah. go to India, if you go to China, the young people are involved in laboratories. The computers are for developing solutions. They are for developing new, new softwares, mm -hmm. new tools, how to do business. And that's what we need to focus our young people on. Okay. Now, uh, talking about uh, talking about orientation. Now, this drives us to the issue of leadership. Mm -hmm. Now, let us look at uh, the young people and leadership. How uh, can young people influence, especially if they're in places of leadership? Okay. So the the. You know, I wanted to give you some uh, demographics. So, Please do. Uh, Africa as a population, we have mm. about 1.43 billion people. Yeah. That forms about 16.3, 16.7 around there mm. of the world's population. Mm. But amazingly, we have the youngest population in the world. Oh, if you go to any African country, the people below 35 years, the, they are 70 to 80 percent of the entire population. Mm. In Uganda, ourselves here, uh, 30, 30 years and below is 70, 78 percent of the population. Mm. So, if you look at those figures and look at the growth rate of the population in Africa, mm. where the future is going to be, mm. in Uganda, as small as we are, we are about 45 million people. Nigeria is 202 million people. Ethiopia I talked about is 117 million people. So we have one of the highest rising population mm -hmm. among young people compared to certain countries in the West. If you go to Italy, uh, and even with the, uh, the advent of COVID, mm. they, they, they have a population of young people less than 30%. Japan, they are struggling. The population is uh, about 80% or uh, 60 years and above. Mm. China has now changed their policy of one child mm. around people. Remember China used to you only yeah. are around one, one child, child mm. per family. And now they are changing around people to have two children because they are seeing their population going down. So while other countries in the world are seeing a population drop and seeing more older people than young people, Africa has the reverse. We have more young people every day than the older people. This is a big asset. It's, some people look at it as a threat, but it's the biggest asset. Mm. Because where is the workforce? Who Remember what we started with? Yeah. The, the 18, the 18, 18 to 35, 35, the productive age, mm. where you can, you've seen people, I've seen a video Youthful of young beautiful. people carrying uh, uh, 10 bags of cement yeah. on their head, mm. that's the energy. So, you've noticed, I travel through Entebbe Airport several times, at least once every two months, I pass through Entebbe. Uh, every time I'm boarding from Entebbe Airport to wherever I'm going, I find a huge number of young girls mm. and a few boys going to the Arab world mm. as casual workers. Mm. Some people have even given some names. So the, 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 for us, for me, from my background of uh, you know, finance and economics and everything, I see 
as Africa, we are losing our opportunity to grow. This, we are sending away young people who are energetic, who are strong. Mm -hmm. And because the Arab world countries have run shortage of young people mm -hmm. to do the work we take them to do, we are sending them cheaply. Mm -hmm. Some earning less than uh, 500,000 a month, yeah. abandoning their homes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then we reach, we come here and, and, and find that in the next maybe 50 years, if the trend goes the other side, mm. we have no potential workforce. True. So most countries are, are, are going to come to Africa to look for young energetic people to go to work in those countries. But the question is, what's the quality of the young people we take to those countries? Mm. I can tell you, if we systematically invested in the quality of the people with it by the way we should be okay because we are living in a global world anybody should feel free to work wherever they want to work in any part of the world or in a part of africa but then there must be a value addition that you've gained from here that you're exporting to that country mm -hmm. if at my level i'm an expatriate i will determine how much i earn if you say the, your salary is this and I'm not okay with it, I'll say, no, I'll not take it. I will have other options. If it's a doctor, I remember when I was in the Swatini, uh, some years back, about two years ago, I went to a country called the Swatini, mm -hmm. just down south of South Africa. I found about the national hospital, what we call the Mrago of Uganda, mm -hmm. was being run by Ugandan doctors. 90% yeah. they were Ugandan doctors. I met, I found one of them is uh, now an MP here. I, 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 he is a friend of mine. So when I reached the Satini, he called me and I went and visited him in his house. And he called the <laughs> colleagues from Uganda. The, <laughs> and it was, uh, we started, you know, I felt home. Mm. But it was the, the because the, the Swatini country and other countries like the Totsu and others mm. are looking for professionals. Trinidad, Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago to are, are Tobago. looking for nurses. Mm. But the question now we should invest in in Uganda, if we have more young people that we, that we don't have jobs for here mm. in, in Uganda, mm. then we should focus our resources in producing quality, qualified, technically demanded skills that we can take outside. I'm not okay with taking people who have just finished their fall because they're going to be abused, they're mm. going to be misused, mm. they're going to be underpaid, mm. they're going to be, they are, they, they are not ready to go out. So for me, we've achieved under UPE and USE, we've achieved quite a lot to bring so many people into schools. Mm. Now the focus is the quality that we should invest in. And I must applaud the president of Uganda. I think a few years ago, he put his foot down on making sciences compulsory mm. in all secondary schools. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he faced a lot of challenges. <laughs> Recently I was following the news <laughs> where he said science <laughs> must be paid higher. extremely higher than yeah. others. Because there must be motivation. I, I, I taught in my S6 vacation, I was teaching in a rural school where there was no laboratory, there was uh, no science books, there was nothing, but he expected people to pass. Sciences. So and you expect it to produce doctors. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> we are taking so, a short commercial break <laughs> and when we come watching lives. Forming Africa. It's a pleasure that you're still watching Flourishing Hub here on Church of Uganda Family TV. Now uh, we know that from today up to the 21st, there is a conference going on which is in Chigali Randa. And just to uh, just to assure you that Church of Uganda Family TV is going to bring you all the updates from Chigali. So just in case you missed out on traveling to Rwanda, have your peace. Church of Uganda Family TV is here for you. You'll have uh, the live event on TV right there on your phone or uh, in your office, wherever you'll be watching starting tomorrow up to the end of the conference and as you see the promo the time frames uh, at which this conference will be broadcasted are clearly indicated so please catch up the conference plus all other 
programs on Church of Uganda Family TV. Now, this is Flourishing Hub, and we are looking at the role of young people in Africa's growth and development. So before the break, uh, Mr. Mwesigwa was telling us about the quality of the young people that are produced in Africa. Mm -hmm. And, and we will continue with that. You are uprouding the president for standing firm to make sciences compulsory. Of course, some of us ended up crying <laughs> because of sciences. <laughs> yeah. But at least uh, yeah. it, it had a milestone uh, it put to the country. And uh, like you were saying, that um, uh, he even went ahead of recent to say that uh, science, uh, uh, scientists should paid slightly higher than the other people because of the efforts yes. and the time and uh, uh, also as a way of motivating very many young people to be part of this innovative world yeah. mm. so it is best knowledge that most of the creativity mm. uh, most of the jobs that are created have a genesis with science yeah. Let it be food uh, revolutionaries, mm. uh, discoveries, genetics, mm. Mm. let it be medicine, let it be uh, plants and uh, whatever. Yeah. It has roots. So there is no country that has ever developed without rooting itself on science mm. innovations. Mm. So for me, uh, the president, when he did this, maybe other people didn't see the, the, the strategic output. They actually condemned it. They him. condemned it. So if you produce scientists, you must then motivate them. Mm. You must encourage those who are studying the sciences yeah. to, 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 to know that if I excel at biology, mm. if I excel at chemistry, mm. and become a teacher of sciences, because how are you going to get better sciences, scientists mm. if you do not motivate those who teach scientists? Mm. You must start with the teachers. And, and we must also upgrade, because I, I did the social I, an, arts, an arts course, mm. but I am okay with the fact that we all need, our crisis is not in development studies. Mm. Our crisis as a country is not in, uh, uh, you know, these other social skills. Our crisis is in the number of scientists we, 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 we want. Some, uh, when I was working in the Sindiro district uh, a few years ago, we had some health centers that needed uh, doctors that didn't have them. We, we had uh, health facilities that needed uh, a certain level of nurses, but were not there. So why don't we first deal with this crisis? So mm. for me, it is very important that as a country and as young people who are watching us right now, mm. they must know where the future is heading. If we are going to make an impactful, uh, meaningful, uh, impact in society. We must know which courses of education are going to make you a genius, mm. are going to help you sort of solutions in society. This is not underrated other courses, mm. but we. the point is that those who make an extra effort to go the other line must be motivated. And I'll give you a test. There's a school in my village, very deep village, uh, called Katanoga Secondary School, founded on um, Church of Uganda Foundation. They, they, they very deep, they, you know, Recently, when the S4 results came, mm. they had students with A's in mathematics, A's in biology, B's in chemistry, something that had never happened before. I was like, yes, this is now beginning to make sense. Mm. Now, when these young people become doctors or become engineers, they will understand the local problems and they are able to go and provide local solutions. Mm. So if it's doable, you know, there was this mentality that science is for only those who are extremely <laughs> over-intelligent, but now it has been proven that with, with the resources mm. and effort, majority of our children can be uh, scientists. Now, the last bit I wanted to touch, just one, yes. pick one on what you asked me, leadership. Mm. Mm. Because I went through all these others to understand that if you don't have young people that have quality, mm. Even the leadership, the leadership question shall not be solved, because I have several times people have wondered and asked the quality of, say, our parliament mm. in the general terms of mm. respect. Because yeah. some people look at the type of people that are there and they say, "Is this the type of person that you'd want to be proud to say this is my MP?" Some people go and say, "Is this the proud of the type of mayor or councillor that you'd proudly, proudly say this is my 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 councillor?" 
Because what's the role of leadership? Leadership is about providing solutions mm. to the problems in society. Are these people who are even in leadership, Christians or whatever faith they believe in, do they actually believe? Because if they don't, how are they going even to listen to you if you come with issues to deal with Christianity, if you come with issues to deal with morality? Mm. So our young people must be encouraged to participate in leadership because there is a, a big vacuum in our leadership let it be political leadership, let it be church leadership, let mm. it be... We've seen so many incidences today. So a very funny story in the media of a, a, a so-called church leader who is conning and stealing from the people. That's a gap in the ministry. Foreigners, so, moreover. Moreover. So what image are we creating for our country? Mm. What image are we painting on people who believe in Christ? So the, 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 the gaps are there. So we must encourage leaders, young people to take active roles in mm -hmm. leadership. Leadership is not only political. Mm -hmm. Because politics is a result of our society. If people, we've seen the, the current president of, of Marawi uh, is, a, is, a, is a, I think, a pastor or mm -hmm. reverend or something. It's called Reverend Chakwera. Yes. So when there are gaps in the political arena, when we have men of integrity in the church, when we have men of respect and honor in the church, they will step up mm. and come forward and say enough is enough, they will take up the leadership mm. of the politics. Mm. We saw, remember, we, we celebrate uh, Archbishop Rum yeah. for his role. Mm. He has been a, made a national hero with a special day to celebrate him mm. for his role in standing up against bad leadership. Yeah. So the question is, young people now of 18 years and 30 years and 25 years, what are we doing about the things that we do not agree with? Or have we resigned and given up? Have you decided that you don't need to be violent, you don't need mm. to, be, to be on the streets fighting, you don't need, you, there are certain, you can write if you are a writer, write an article mm. on things that, that should happen. Come on TV, mm. express your opinions, mm. go to church and talk to young people. I, 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 I told you in the off, off air some time back that for me, at the age of when I was in Essex, mm. ending my Essex vacation, I, I specifically went into youth leadership. I became a national leader. I went to Africa, became a leader in Africa. I reached a global level where I was influencing youth leadership. How do we bring more young people mm. into the leadership platform? Mm. The organization where I was, we changed the policies. I used to, there was a council in Geneva mm. where there was a, it was a council called the Youth Council for one of the organizations I was working with. Mm. And when I went to Geneva in 2003, I found people who are 50, 60 years sitting on the youth council <laughs> and calling themselves young people, they were you started with. So I stood up and I, I spoke in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the meeting and I said, this is unacceptable. We cannot have old people <laughs> deliberating and discussing on behalf of young people. Mm. So I put up a paper, I wrote, I was called again in Spain and we, we, I was put on a committee of five people across the globe to formulate a different youth policy with different youth age groups on how now young people can take charge. Mm. Now, 20 years down the road, I'm proud of what I contributed as an individual. That, that policy we formulated has governed and brought more young people mm. on board to take leadership in that organization. In 2011, I went and stood as a village councillor. I was, yeah, I was 30, 30, 31. Because I was not happy with the services my community was receiving. Mm. I, had, I was educated, I was working with a big NGO, I had money, a little bit, and I, but I decided I'm putting this aside, let me go and work with the community on education, on health, and other things of change. So I, I spent five years in the bush, in the village, in the singular deep there working with the communities. Mm. I empowered the people. Right now when I'm in Zambia, I'm proud that at my young age, when I was 30, I did something that I go back and look forward and say, yes, we've changed this and mm. I put an effort. Lastly, I have personally 
made it a point that if I'm to grow in leadership, and I did that several years ago when I was still in the youth bracket, you, we needed, you need to identify a mentor. Mm. You need to identify a role model. Mm. And, and I made it a purpose to know where my interests were, and I created those networks of people who I would go to for advice, let it be in politics, and people I'd consult because I knew they had integrity, I knew they had uh, credibility, and I, has, I admired what they were. So in as whoever is watching us as a mm. young person, whether you're 20 or 25, 23, who is your role model? Who is your mentor? Mm. Have you identified what you want to be? If you are going to be a leader, you, let's say you want to be a politician, is there an, a politician in this country that you are proud of? That you say that if I become a politician, I want to be like so and so, mm. and make the effort to reach that person. Every day for me, I mentor hundreds of young people. Because I said of social media, yeah. even when I'm away, the young mm. people who reach out to me and say, I'm struggling in this, how, what's your advice? Then I take time and say, okay, I'm busy now, at maybe 18 hours or 18.30, text me, then we do a video call, I take him through quite a lot of things. Mm. So I, have, I still do the mentorship. I'm not able to come to do, you know, meetings. I used to go to universities, mm. to colleges, to give talks, to do counseling. But I'm using the social media platform mm. to provide guidance. So those who know me or reach me, they will unbox me even when they don't know me, but they know that I, I can probably be of value to yeah. them. In the box me on my Facebook account, say I'm from so and so, I'm at the university, I'm struggling with this, how can I deal with it? I hear mm. So as a young person who is out there, have you identified where you want to be? Have you identified who can help you get there? Have you identified who can be your mentor? Have you identified who can be your role model? And these people most of the time are willing to give a hand okay. to the young people. Yeah. You may think he's a vice chancellor, you mm. might think he's an MD in this company. As long as they know that you are not the type who, the usual begging young people who come <laughs> to, you, you are the, so, because the so you, you think you're looking for connections it, that you can ask uh -huh. for something from them. So if they know that you are genuinely uh, interested in learning the skill. Mm. If you come and say, I want to be an accountant, I admire my accountant so and so, I'm right now in my sixth vacation. And you reach out, find a way to reach out to that person. Mm. Say, help me, what do I need to be a better accountant? Why do I need to be a better lawyer? There are good lawyers in town. Mm. And you say, mentor me. Let me be on your people that you help. Mm. People are willing to help out. But if you choose to stay in your cocoon and you know in your small groups and you think you have arrived then you don't get to achieve so i ask the young people who are watching we, us we, we have one thing we say that those people are unapproachable mm -hmm. it is very hard to reach them no because they have been used they have been sometimes disappointed by mm. people who come with arterial motives you don't, as I said, personal experience, I don't know how many young people I've dealt with in the last 15 years, 20 years. Some, of course, indeed don't get where they want to be, but mm. I have so many young people I'm proud of today, who I know I started with them in the S4, mm. in the S6, and they are now MDs and senior officers somewhere, and I know I contributed to this. So there are any other, young, any other older person who has made it in life, 90% they are willing to pull another person. Come with clean intentions. Come with clear objectives. Come with knowledge of knowing what you want. Because for me, when I talk to a young person in 10 minutes, I already know this is a focused, determined young person. Mm -hmm. And I can also tell a misguided young person who is still not sure what they want to be. <laughs> so it, if, you, if you determine what you want to be yeah. and where you want to see yourself in the next 10 years, now focus on who can help you to get there. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is what we've always told people. One of the pillars of young and flourishing mm. is mentorship. Yeah. Uh, I believe all successful people have a mentor behind them who speaks to them, mm. who directs their paths. Mm. Now, talking about uh, mentorship, talking about all that we've talked about, we realize that very many young people mm. are having uh, one big problem and that is called career choice. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about scientists and uh, because the president said 
and they should be maybe given slightly higher pay. Mm -hmm. You realize that very many people might run to sciences, not because of the passion, mm -hmm. but because of the higher pay. They want to be part of those people who earn uh, millions. Uh, so you realize that uh, young people generally have a problem of career choices. What do you have to say about that? So career choices um, mm. is we have also a societal problem where sometimes parents dictate, exactly. um, orient from a childhood that you must be a doctor, yeah. that you must <laughs> be an engineer. So, and then if a child attempts to do something different from that, mm. then the parents would even, some parents as in very specific terms, may even threaten to withdraw they 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 are they are they are they are fees yeah. so the, it is important of course when you're young it you are still everywhere True. maybe between 10 to 15 and 20 years mm. sometimes the bachelor's level mm. you may not even have studied what you like exactly so uh by 20 so majority of young people finish university 20 21 22. Mm. so i always encourage young people one do not rush to do a master's degree mm. unless you are absolutely sure and you've been convinced from years back that this is what i want to do mm. because a master's degree is mastering into something you've just finished a bachelor's what are you mastering in you must work one two years mm. then you test your environment and say okay i like what i'm doing or I don't like what I'm doing. Now I can choose to study a master's in relation to what I actually want to do. So it is important that when people, if you are able to identify what you want earlier on, maybe at a six, yeah. at a senior four, and you're absolutely sure that's what you want, then you can pursue it. If you know that your career is going to be a lecturer or a researcher or whatever, yeah. and that's what you've picked, then you can straight away go to a master's degree. And, and, and because that's you determine that's where you want yeah. to be. But if you are still uncertain of what direction you want to take, then you must wait and see, test your waters and see uh, where, you, are, where you, are, you fit properly and where you, 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 you will settle. Number two, number three, there are people who have passion, say, in business. Mm. They want to be business people, they want to be uh, whatever other careers they want to pick. So it, I always encourage them, first to do at least one degree. Mm -hmm. Because even if you want to be a business person, it is important that you have a minimum level of education. Because mm -hmm. education does not make you who you will become. Education is just to orient you. The, the, the classroom is supposed just to open up your mind to broader aspects of, of thinking, analytical skills, and others. The other things, actually, I always tell people, I sit on many interview panels. Mm. You'd be amazed that when we do interviews, we give about 20 to 30 percent maximum on academic qualifications. We rarely do we exceed 30 when we are assessing because the, if i'm looking for uh, an accountant there are thousands of people with accounting degrees yeah. I, I mean everybody if you advertise now last week we were advertising at the workplace mm -hmm. we wanted an accountant and there were 616 applicants and that is the smallest number so all those have the best minimum qualification but then when we come to picking who we pick as number one it has nothing to do with what you studied. We are looking for interpersonal skills. We are looking for character. We are looking for integrity. We are looking for, and sometimes I, I might forget this, sometimes people don't know that what they post on social media <laughs> will, ha will haunt them <laughs> 20 years <laughs> from now. Sometimes some jobs, because of the sensitivity, yeah. we go to your social media handles. We will check your Facebook. Mm. Your Facebook, in 10 minutes of browsing through, will show me who you are. Yeah, true. If you are always in the parties, naked, dancing, and whatever, <laughs> that's what you post. If you post, if you are, sometimes, sometimes even government jobs, mm. they will look at 
your political opinions exactly because yeah. you you are busy commenting anyhow mm. on uh, on on any event even insulting some mm. people you see post because in Uganda have freedom of media so you see people insulting the president is they may not penalize it because of your political opinion mm. but it will speak volumes on who you are yeah so as young people when you are going what's going to determine you and make you a part is not the degree that you've studied because mm. hundreds and thousands of people have that similar degree mm. it's your personality it's your character it's your integrity so when we interview you we give you scenarios of which will bring out that aspect are you ambitious mm. are you hungry to succeed uh, we, we look at what, previous assignments. What have you handled? What have you achieved? What have you done before? You, as I said, we go to your social life. Mm. So all those things are, are, are things you don't learn in school. People forget that. You go to school and, for example, if you pick your friends, your friends are going to shape your character. Mm. If you are people, if you are with the people who, if you are a Christian, definitely among your friends there must be a group of Christians yeah. who profess what you believe in mm. who will say now let's go and pray or who will say let's join some church group in uh, youth mission or whatever mm. so it, it will definitely in the long term impact the kind of person you're going to become so i tell young people that for you to succeed in your career for you to be a career person one determine what you want to become mm. in terms of professional careers if you want to be a teacher if you want to be a medical doctor pick it but do not be rigid on that keep looking at other options mm. so that by the time you reach the age of university you've picked one area of concentration but also it is very highly possible that you might finish university and discover that what you studied at the university is not what you're going to be sure. or what you like i mean i studied bachelor of, of, of commerce uh, in finance I was supposed to be financial in banking. Mm. So I later on found myself in procurement. procurement. <laughs> so I've studied and done my masters, my postgraduates, my mm. everything in, in, in procurement. So it means if I'd rushed at the university before immediately after the university to do a certain course, probably I would have wasted that time. So now it, the last one is to make sure that above all, make good grades. Get the first class if you can, but it should not be your at any cost what else do you do when you're at the university apart mm. from reading books what else are you involved in are you a sports person mm. are you in the choir of the church where you belong mm. are you in any clubs rotary ro uh, youth youth rotaract. movements it rotaract mm. uh, are you in any group that helps you to be better do you challenge yourself to take up roles because at the end of the day, you, I have seen very many, and by the way, right now, when, during our years of, of, of university, they would only read like one first class degree. Uh, but now, on, <laughs> on graduation, I don't yeah, know the number many. of first class that they are reading out. So it, would, it was always obvious that a first mm. class student degree uh, would automatically be admitted in the university mm. as a lecturer or a scholarship to go abroad. Right now, if you are to do that, there are so many of them. So a first class is no longer a ticket mm. to employment. Mm. So you need something else. So I ask young people, you, it's okay. You are not supposed to be a slave to work, a mm. slave to... You can have social life. You can do any other things. You can watch football as an example. It's okay. But also look at the day-to-day -day hours of your day. How many of those hours are you spending in adding value to yourself? How many of young people out there do actually read books you know even the bible itself is now accessible on the phone yes. there are free books that, that time when we were still using hard copies you'd have to beg a friend to give you the hard copy <laughs> or even because you couldn't afford to buy it yeah. now there are free downloads yeah. motivational books mm. uh christian books uh, books of business uh successful businesses yeah. if in a month at least read a book Mr. Mwesba, <laughs> as we, wi we wind up mm. in less than a minute, yes. what are your last remarks to a young person who watched us from the time we started up to now? For young people, I want them to read Timothy 4.12. I don't have time to go through it. First or second? Timothy, Timothy. 4.12 mm. and uh, Jeremiah 1, 
four to nine, uh, Ecclesiastes eleven nine to ten. It will tell them that God has already paved the way. Some of the verses mm. that also God takes care of even when you're not sure where you want to be. It, that also God gives grace the, and, and courage and energy like the way he did for David or Joseph in the wilderness or all of the servants he has used. Mm -hmm. But the most importantly that those were also young people. Sure. That God picked them in their youthfulness and showed them the direction but they were willing to seek God. That those young people, those people have made it in life, the Mandelas, if you want to go outside the Bible, mm -hmm. the Mandelas, the Thomas Sankaras, mm -hmm. the, 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 the President Museven and his group, yeah. they were in their 30s. I know some, uh, some of the, when look at Museven, the messages, he became a minister at 29, or the others. So the, the, these young people took decisions at the age where we are wasting our lives. Mm -hmm. At the age where we are doing memes and, uh, and, 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 and screenshots and whatever, these people had taken their decision in the early 30s mm. that we want to change the environment where we are. Mm. So if you see people in their adulthood, they made decisions 30 years ago to determine what they want to be. You might see me, yeah, I mean, I'm not big, I'm still trying to make it in my own way, mm. but some young people, they say, oh, how do I become... Like, a procurement expert at an international level. Mm -hmm. How do I go to these international organizations? I, when I sit in an inter, I also tell, tell the young people when I mentor them, in my entire life, I've never failed an, an oral interview. Mm -hmm. I've never failed an oral interview. Because I, pro, I, I prepared myself from the ages of 18, 15, on how to speak in public, mm -hmm. on how to read, I read quite a lot, on how to prepare for such scenarios, how to interact with people. It's a process, it's not luck. Mm -hmm. I always, that's the day I always tell people, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's one, that young people tend to believe there is. And when you, when you fail, you start blaming God, you start believing in luck, and mm -hmm. thinking those who have made it are lucky. I, I'm telling people that there is no luck. Rack is, when you get a formula, I say rack is equal to opportunity mm. and preparedness. If opportunity meeting, preparedness. preparedness. So opportunities are always there. Mm. If they say we want to give you an aeroplane in this studio, <laughs> and they say we want to take it, but fry it, will you take it? You're not prepared. It's an opportunity, but you are not. Which lacks preparedness. Preparedness. Wow. So young people should be prepared. <laughs> mm so that they can meet the opportunities which will equal to what a majority call luck. Thank you so much uh, for watching. I cannot add on that. Opportunity plus preparedness is what we call luck. Thank you so much. God bless you. We meet again next time.